What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to be creating a 3D CSS button with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. When all is said and done, we will have a button that looks like this. The text on the button has a nice shadow, so it looks like it's being raised off the face of the button. The button itself is also going to have a shadow to make it look like it is raised off the black base here. If I click on the button, it looks like the button is getting pushed into the base. On click, we change the shadow of the button to be an inset shadow and a little lighter color. This gives us that glowing look when the button is pushed in. We also change the text shadow to be a few pixels shorter. This is to account for the button being pushed in. I'm gonna head over to my www folder, blog code, and create a new folder called CSS button. Inside of my new folder, CSS button, I am going to create an index.php file. And then I'm gonna open that in Sublime Text. I have my index.php file open. And on the right side of the screen over here, I have my browser open to the index.php file. This way, as we're making CSS updates, we can quickly refresh our page and see how it looks. Let's begin by coding up our basic HTML structure. And our HTML structure is set up. We have our head section that contains the title and our meta tag viewport. This will make our site look nice on a mobile device. Then we define the style section where we will place our CSS styles for the body where the button will appear. The first thing I'm gonna code up is the container. container I have placed at the very center of our page. That's what the top 50, left 50, and the translate negative 50, negative 50 does. Refresh my page, I see, um, oh, well, if I can spell position correctly, there we go. Now we see it is in the center, the button. Now our button will always be in the center of our page. Moving on, we're going to code up the button. Refreshing our page, we now have what is starting to look like a button. We've given it a color, font family, the weight, size, making sure it's aligned to the center, giving ourselves that background color. The shadow here is the color that's height of 10 pixels. So if I change this to five pixels, you can see this is the 3D effect I'm giving my button. I make it 50 pixels, button gets really big. That is how we create our button face and we give it a shadow so it looks like it is 3D. I'm going to remove this blue border. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to create our base. So our base is styled up. Let's refresh our page and see what it looks like. Looks like it is taking over our button. So we do have a height of 100%, a width of 100%, some padding on there. Our position is absolute inside of our container. The bottom and left position the this big black square to where we want it to go. So if I made left to zero, you will see that it perfectly lines up with the left side of the button. So we want to offset that by five pixels. Same with the bottom. If you make this zero, you will see this jump up. So we have to offset it by the correct amount of pixels so it perfectly lines up behind our button. The thing that I did wrong is my Z index needs to be negative one. This will place my black background behind the red button we created. Refresh it and now it looks like it is behind our button and it looks, now our black base is behind the red button that we created. You can play around with these different numbers, how much padding you want, the size and so on to make it the way you want it to look and the way you want it to feel. This box shadow also gives our button a nice little black glow to it. So if I comment this out and refresh it, you see 
there's no glow. So we put a little box shadow on there of 15 pixels and we get a nice little black glow around the whole thing. Now we need to code up our active state for our button. So when it gets pushed in, it looks like it is going into the base. I'm going to call this the button main active. When I'm coding up an active state on a button, I like to put this class right here so that on page load, I can see what it looks like when it's active. Now, of course, if I refresh it, nothing's going to happen because nothing is in here. If we start adding things to our active class, we can see what it will look like. The first thing I'm going to do is add our text shadow. The text shadow here is going to override our main text shadow from three pixels down to one pixel. This will make the text look less raised off the button face when the button is pressed in. Next, we have to move our button down. We need to see the black base all around our button. So we're moving this button face right here down 10 pixels. Now our button has been moved down, text shadow is in place. Now we have to update our box shadow. That top 10 pushes down the whole thing. So in its initial state, this is the box shadow that we have on it. In the active state, we want to give it a lighter color and we want to give it a nice even inset on the whole button around all of the edges. Save that, refresh it. Now it looks like the button is being pushed. Now we want to update the background color of the button when it's being pushed to a lighter color. Currently, the main button here, we're using this background color and so that's why we're seeing that color here because we haven't put anything in our active state for the background color yet. We're going to use a little lighter background color refresh our page and now we have a much lighter color when the button is being pushed. You can see my active state works. If I take it away, we have our default state and if I apply it to this button, it gets pushed. I'm going to remove this active state from my button for good. And to see how it works, I can come up here and the main button, I can set the active state of it by doing colon active. Now, when I click on the button, the active state gets triggered. I did notice that you can highlight the text here, which is not a very good looking user experience for when you're spamming a button like this. So we're going to create ourselves a no highlight class. Our no highlight class basically says, don't let the text be highlighted. We want to apply this to our whole button. The button container. Refresh my page, I click the button a bunch, and I am not able to highlight it at all. And that looks a lot better and it's a much better user experience when you're clicking a button. The other thing I want to add is when I hover over this button, my cursor should change to the little hand. So we need to specify the button class on hover. So we just do the button, colon hover, and we do cursor pointer. Now our cursor turns to the pointer every time we hover over the button. At this point, we have a very nice looking button styled up with CSS and HTML. Now I'm going to check out how it acts and behaves in mobile. I'm going to navigate to my index.php file in Chrome. Open up the inspector element by clicking F12 button. Zoom it in here. Here we're on a Galaxy S5. It's looking good. I can click it. Everything is looking just like it looks in our browser on our desktop. And when I click on it, it acts the same and the active state takes over. If I start clicking it a lot though, however, I see, and it gives us this highlight color. To get rid of this highlight color on mobile, we're going to put a style on the whole HTML element, WebKit tap highlight color. And we're going to set it to transparent. This tells anything inside of our HTML, when it gets tapped on, we want the highlight color to be transparent. If we refresh our page and we click on it and we click on it a lot, try to spam the button, the highlight color never shows up. Comment this out just to see if we spam this a bunch now, that highlight color is showing up. Bad user experience. So we put in WebKit tap highlight color and we set it to transparent. The other thing I notice when I spam this button is it does not respond like it does on the desktop. If I head over to my desktop page and I spam it, it reacts for every click. Every click I do, the button pushes and comes back out. On mobile, it doesn't. See how it lags? This is where I'm going to use JavaScript. I'm going to replace our active state, purely CSS, with JavaScript. I'm going to create a JavaScript on click event for this push button. That way, when I click on it on mobile, it will respond just like it does on the desktop. 
I'm going to comment this line out right here just to save it for reference. And I'm going to change it back to main dash active. Now we get to start writing some JavaScript. First thing I'm going to do is code up a document.ready function listener. Anything inside here will be run once the document has loaded. After all of our HTML has been written out, then we will execute the code that we place in here, which will be adding event click listeners to our button. Now to do that, we have to get our button. Right here, I'm getting all of the buttons on the page with the class, the button. In this case, I just have one button. The get elements by class name function does return an array though. So in this case, even though we only have one button, we do have to loop over the elements in the array. We have gotten all of the buttons on our page with the class name, the button. Then we're gonna loop over all of those elements and we're gonna console log out each of them just to make sure our JavaScript is up and running. Open up the inspector element here refresh our page, and we get one console logout of the button. Perfect. Now what we want to do is add an event listener, a click listener for our button, and every time it gets clicked, we want to add this class to our button. So our add event listener, the first parameter is the type of event. In this case, it's a mouse down. In the case of a mouse down, we're going to add a function that will add the class to the button we want this class right here to be added to our main button class. The click event we're doing is on the button. We want to add this class to the first child of the element that we're actually clicking on. Inside of the mouse down function, we're going to get our element by referencing the this object. Then we want to specify the children. In this case, we want to do the first child under the button. This dot children, zero, the first child, then to the class list for the first child, we want to add our active class. So anytime there's a mouse down event on the button class, we're going to add the button main active class to the first child of the button. We refresh our page and click on the button. We can see that the main active class has been added to the button. Now the button doesn't pop back out because we don't have a mouse up function coded yet. To do that, we're simply going to copy this function right here, and we just have to change this to mouse up. Now, anytime the mouse goes up, we want to remove the main active class from the first child. Instead of a dot add, we do dot remove. Refresh our page, we click the button, and then we let go of the mouse, and the button comes back up. We can still spam the button just like we could when we were using pure CSS. Our desktop view looks great. Hopping over to our mobile view, nothing works. And this is because the events are different on mobile. The events for mobile are touch start and touch end. So really all we need to do is copy this and change the event to a touch start. Then we copy our mouse up function and we change the event name to touch end. Now if we refresh our mobile page, we click on the button, the button goes down, we release, and the button comes back up. And when you spam it, the button goes down and up every single time you click it. Unlike earlier where we were using pure CSS and you would spam it and the button wouldn't react as you would expect. There was a delay. Now I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. We're going to remove this console log. And these two events here are pretty much the same. Same with these two and rewriting this code doesn't really make much sense. So I'm going to create a function for each of them. Variable on button down, variable on button up. In here, I'm going to copy my adding of the main active class for the on button down variable. The on button up, I am going to copy and paste my removing of the main active class variable. Now, inside of each add event listener, inside of our for loop, instead of the function right here, the function is up here. So we can simply say on mouse down. For the event mouse down, we call the function on button down, which then adds our main active class to the button. 
we do the same thing for our touch start. Then for our mouse up and touch end, we replace the function with the on button up functions. This way is a lot cleaner. Now in order to update the on button down function, all we have to do is update whatever is inside here. Versus before, we would have had to update the function inside of the mouse down event and the touch start event. Let's make sure it still works. Refresh our page, click on our button, spam our button. Looking great. Hop over to our mobile page, click on our button, spam our button. Also working great. And that is how you create a 3D button using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see. Code it up next. I'll catch you later.